too. Okay, so we're here at our spot, but first I'm gonna just set up my line and I'm gonna use one of my favorite live bait rigs here. I'm gonna show you exactly how I tie it up and exactly how I use it. All right, so this rig is really simple. So first you're gonna get a little sinker like this. It's an egg sinker, put it through the main line. All right, then we're gonna put a little bead. This little plastic bead helps so that the sinker hole doesn't get stuck on this swivel. Next, we're going to put a two-way swivel. We're going to tie it with an improved clinch knot. And this main line here is only, I think, 15 pound line. You want to keep things light so that the fish can swim naturally. So I tied a two-way swivel on. We've got an egg sinker like this. Egg sinker to bead to swivel. Now I've got 15 pound line right here. We're tying 15 pound line on. And then size four eagle claw hook. Now the important part about the hook is that it's about the same size as the bait. And this is a perfect size for mud minnows, a perfect size for smaller baits. Because if the hook is too heavy, the bait won't swim naturally. It'll be too heavy, it'll weigh it down, and it won't look natural enough. And that will result in less fish. Now this is the Carolina rig that I'm using. Hook, 15 pound line, two way swivel, to a bead, to an egg sinker. Now, you can either tie that yourself, or I offer the exact same thing that I have already pre-tied for you, and all you need to do is just tie it onto your line. When you get to your spot, you do the exact same thing I just showed you, except you don't need to tie it. Each pack of these come with three rigs, so, you know, get yourself like a three or four packs and you'll be good for the month. All right, let's go fishing. Now that I'm out here, I'm gonna show you guys how to use the live bait. First of all, make sure you keep the live bait alive. Whether you're on shore and you use a bubbler or you're in the water, keep it in a bucket that has holes in it so it can keep it alive as you fish. Next, we're gonna be using mud minnows today. Hook it right through the bottom lip like this. And you can see how the hook is perfect size for the bait. Not too big, not too small. I'm using the same setup I just set up earlier. Now, where are you casting? I'm casting it right into the middle of the river, right into the middle, and just letting it drift to the right. When I feel something slightly tug at my line, I'll let it eat and then set the hook, okay? So now I'm letting this drift. The water's moving this way. That's why I'm using a Carolina rig because this egg sinker will drift along nice and easy. If you're using a high-low rig with a pyramid sinker, it's gonna get stuck on a rock under there. So it's really efficient to use Carolina rig because you can cover the distance keep drift fishing. Sit there. Oh yeah. Holy cow. This is a sea robin. Whoa. Wow, look at that fish. Huge sea robin. 
look at that. This is called a sea robin. And they are very good to eat. However, it's a little too pretty for me to want to keep. I'm just gonna let it back in the water. Bye-bye. You were on a fish? You gotta let it eat it. Check it. Oh yeah, that's a flounder, Dad. Yeah. They're starting to bite. The water's starting to move. You see that? On? Yeah. What was that? It's a nice one. Nice keeper flounder. Let him land it All right. First flounder for the season. There you go. Good job, Dad. That's with the little Carolina rig set up, like I said. Look at those teeth. Oh my goodness. About two, three times before I got a hold of them. Look at that. They oh, got some bristle teeth, man. I tell you, don't put your finger in there. Look like piranha, you know? But they're very sharp. get bitten it's just a little bite right just like a, tum, tum, tum. Little, little thump. a little thump and then it and then it starts moving or it just starts stays really still that's what you need to tell them and then you see the tip of your rod bouncing a little bit until you see the big pull on your rod and then you start setting yeah sometimes well, some, we have... some fish just hit it and run with it some fish will hit it and stay in one position and sometimes we have to remind ourselves rather even that you you do this a lot of time but sometimes you forgot different fish have different way to take a bait yeah. 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 on yeah. 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 hey how come i'm not getting any bite you're not too expensive <laughs> I gotta get a cheesy rod. Bluefish. Ha, you little booger. Oh, oh bit your line off. I need to get a new one. All right, I just want to warn you guys. The low tide was negative two. High tide is over five feet. was so flat and calm, nothing moving. Now everything's moving so fast. Should we uh, turn this to ceviche? What do you want to do with this, Aaron? I, I, I got nothing against bluefish. It's a little small, so we'll have to get more than one. No, well, this is enough for ceviche for you and me, no problem. Yeah, true. 
All right. This method of bait fishing, you're able to catch all sorts of different kinds of fish, not just one species. Everything likes to see a live bait presented this way. Now I'll hook it right under the chin like this, through the head. It's a perfect way to hook it. This rig works so well because when it's in the water column, this ball is just kind of rolling on the bottom, trailing this bait behind it. So anything that's feeding off of the bottom is gonna see this swim by slowly and it's gonna take it. Okay, so here's the best method to use live bait here, okay? I'm fishing where the tide is moving from this way to this way. There's a bunch of fish that I think that are gonna be here coming through the middle. Now, in order to fish this, instead of using a high-low rig, which just sits in one place and you plant it and anchor it in one spot, I'm using what's called a Carolina rig. And this has an egg sinker that slides, little hook, and a 15-pound leader line for our main, our, our leader. This little light leader line and small hook, small bait, catches a lot of different kinds of fish. Now, the method itself is I'm gonna cast this upstream and let it drift all the way down here. Once I get down to the right, I pick it up and I recast it back down there. And what we're doing here is we're searching from there to there if there's any fish coming through. If you imagine what this looks like underwater, it looks like a minnow kind of bouncing off the bottom, but it, it doesn't go through too fast because the sinker holds it down onto the bottom. But the minnow will be bouncing on the bottom. A lot of fish are out there just waiting to ambush little minnows that are swimming by. Anything that sees it is going to hit it. So that's the basic idea. We're here, instead of planting it in one spot, we're casting it upstream and we're drifting it all the way down. And you can do this anywhere you have moving water. And you also don't even have to be in the water. We just like to be in the water because it's a little cooler, it keeps you cooler on a hot day. You can kind of feel the sinker kind of moving around the bottom, but that's not a bite. You'll feel a bite when your line stops moving, or you'll feel a tug, or you'll feel it move upstream. That's when you know something is on your line. See, that one swam upstream. Ooh. Is that a doggy? No, it's a, it's a bluefish. Yeah. Gee, these are feisty little fish, huh? Nice. I guess ceviche, yeah, I included. Ceviche, we're gonna turn these bluefish into ceviche. But this is exactly how I was explaining it. I'm drifting it down right into the mouths of these fish. So we've got four different species of fish today. My dad got a flounder. I got a sea robin. We got a couple of bluefish. And my dad got a jack. That's four fish on one kind of live bait, one kind of rig. Papa, don't get nothing. You got flounder? Now this is not necessarily a beginner's method of fishing. This is actually a little bit a little bit more intermediate style. Just because you have to be able to tell what your rod feels like, you have to be able to drift your line without getting stuck on rocks and be able to tell the difference between a fish and rocks. That's another reason why I think the high low rig would not work here. This is pretty much exclusively the only rig I would use here. Um, maybe a free line if the water wasn't moving so fast, but this is a great rig you can use anywhere you go. It's a really awesome rig, especially in moving water. So one more time, I'm casting it up here. I'm drifting it, I'm following my line. I'm watching my main line and it's gonna be moving this way. It should be moving this way. If my line starts to move that way all of a sudden, you know there's something on there. If my line just stops all of a sudden, it could be two things. It could be stuck on a rock, stuck on weeds, or a fish could be slowly eating it. So now the water's moving a little bit too fast here. I like to find water that's moving a good speed where it's not so fast that I need a really heavy sinker. So sometimes you're gonna to need to move spots to find a little bit slower moving water. And under that bridge over there, I think it's gonna be a great spot to try. Let's go before the tide comes up too fast. That's a big one. What is that, bluefish? Oh no, no. Where'd you get that? 
Yeah, I just walking. Oh, you were walking? Yeah. Right on the dot, yeah. Calm down, my friend. Maybe we should just stay here. Ah! Did you? Yeah, I got me. See this? Ah! This is why you keep your fingers off the mouth. Now, a lot of time I got snipped by the crab, this time by the flounder. Boy, I'm gonna eat you good. So what happened? You just felt it stop moving or you felt it go off with it? Oh, uh, no, it stopped. It just suddenly looked like, uh, you know, something sucked down on the, on, the, on the bottom floor. And I say, hmm, I'm trying to set the hook. It's just a little stump. And then it stopped. And then it didn't do anything. And then I just sit the hook and then a bad boy started swimming. And that wasn't even in the middle, right? No, just I right. just, you know, I just dripped it. Okay, so here's the next method. Pass it out and you just walk back with it. And that kind of trolling action, I have it pass it all the way out there. It flipped it over there. And now it's way behind me and I just kind of walk with this bait behind me really slowly. Hopefully I can catch something on the way back as I walk to the bridge, as I walk back to the car. I might get something else. Fish? Yeah. <laughs> Man, big, big boy. That's a big boy. That's a fatty. See, fatty. See, yummy. Yeah. Pull it up, pull it up. Nice stringer so far. Look at that. Why is that a baby? Oh, it's the trout. Yeah. I got a speckled trout. Keeper, too. And then there's a the, the, oh. the flounder. Oh, my lord. <laughs> and then the whole string. <laughs> wow, we got so many fish here, guys. <laughs> that was crazy. Wow, so that's five species of fish so far. We're using our mini sure catch rig, or what's also called a Carolina rig. Whoa! Oh, oh, you 
help. What the hell are you? Me okay. too. I just lost it. That was something big. That was a big one. Uh, took my whole thing. Oh my god. We gotta get back out there. Oh, it's a bluefish jumping around. Don't get bitten, Dad. This one, this one really will hurt, okay? Holy cow! Holy Simon cow! Blue. Don't want them. We got enough blues. We want flounders. If you pass it to the middle, you're gonna get a blue. If you pass it and let it drift over here, it's gonna, you're gonna get a, uh, a flounder. I might pull you wrong. Maybe you're using a clown. Nah, I got you as a blue. Don't jump, okay? Let me get it, yeah. Oh, that's a blue. You swim like that, there have to be a blue. It's so blue. I'm gonna let it go. Yeah, it's okay, we got enough blue. I think I got a, I think I got a powder on here. Yup. I felt it thump it and it just sat still on the bottom. I don't know what else it would be. That is a flounder. Baby. A little small, so we're gonna let them go. Let them go, let them flow. I mean, there's only like four left, so I'm just gonna stay here and fish these. Number one rule is don't leave fish to go find more fish. If the fish are biting, stay with the fish. It's fun, right, Dad? You having yeah. fun? Yeah. Well, I got bitten. Yeah, that was bad this morning. This morning we were getting attacked. Yeah, and <laughs> I can solve it with someone. Come on, go on. And then like one second later, we start catching a lot of fish. No, I was I was about to get up too. So five species of fish today. That's incredible. See, I think because you're walking, that's why we got fish right now. Not because you're standing around. Well what's the difference between walking and then and reeling it in a little Consistency. bit? Consistency. I told you the walking method is good. I told you I wasn't leaving, I was just walking. I love guessing whether something's on there or not and then setting the hook and then finding out that there is something. Oh, flounders. Another Maybe. small flounder. How, how good it is at hibernating, at, at hiding on the bottom of the water because it looks just like mud. It's gonna be very hard for anything to detect this. They love to ambush. That's why you're walking, right? So you drag the bait down on the bottom, and then you go right after it. You see, saw some movement. So you go after it. Mm-hmm. So I'm walking my line like I'm walking a dog. When the dog stops and starts pulling on the leash a little bit, you let it eat, you let it eat, then you set the hook. So we're gonna just walk really slowly with this dragging behind me until I feel my rod stop moving and it feels like a little bit of pressure maybe it's stuck on a rock or something usually it's not a rock usually it's a flounder because with this rig it doesn't get stuck very often that egg sinker rolls over things usually oh my god holy cow <laughs> what is what? Hey. That's the winner of the day. Wow, that's a big flounder right there. Big one. Baby flounder. Oh, nice one. I think you're the winner today. You caught the smallest little flounders. I thought when they were that small, they still have two eyes on, on you know, the normal way. Like, as they grow older, they have one, both eyes on one side. Oh crap. Last one. Squeeze 
Send. I got no more bait. We're done. So there's a million ways to use live bait, but this is my number one favorite way to use it. And I hope that you learned something today. If not, I hope you at least enjoyed watching us fish. It's always such a great time every time we come out to the water, especially when I get to come out here with my fiance and my dad, and we're just having a good time catching fish. Today was a really great day, and it was a perfect example of how drifting this bait through the water column works really well. If we were to be fishing high low rig this time, this entire time, we would have been getting snag after snag and maybe not even any kind of fish. This method worked really well because the water was moving and we're moving the bait with the water. So it looks very natural. Here at Hey Skipper, we want to help you get on fish. If you like this kind of video and you like learning, I recommend you subscribe to our channel. To hit the little bell on the side and you'll be alerted every time we put out a new video. We put out a new video every Thursday. 7 30 p.m and um, join us so we actually have all these rigs pre-tied if you don't want to tie it yourself it's called the mini sure catch and the mini sure catch the specialty of this is that it has small hook small swivel and a light line so you can catch lots of different kinds of fish and um, it's actually the little hooks are meant so you can use little minnows little shrimps and little baits but little baits doesn't mean little fish Little baits means it's very inconspicuous. You'll catch all sorts of different kinds of fish. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'm gonna take these flounder and these bluefish home. I'm gonna cook it up in my favorite ways. Join us when we cook them up and I'll see you next week.